Ah, Kirby. Perhaps the most adorable icon of gluttony in all of modern day pop culture. This is a character whose races are described as gourmet, and here in 2022 they've arguably only become more so in the recently released Kirby spin-off, Kirby's Dream Buffet. In this game, Kirby finds himself shrunk down to the size of a mere cake topper to compete with other Kirbys to, through minigames, battles, and races, devour the most strawberries. But today, I pose to you a pressing question. Amidst this incredibly caloric contest, is there a place for a fasting Kirby? Or in less flowery language, is it possible to finish a round of Kirby's Dream Buffet without eating? So, how exactly are we going to go about this? Kirby's Dream Buffet, unlike most of the other Kirby games we've attempted challenges on, is an online multiplayer focused experience. As such, there's not a campaign to try to beat to prove our challenge successful. What we do have available are courses of online multiplayer. Now, let me make one thing abundantly clear. We are not trying to win these multiplayer matches. Such a thing would be literally impossible since we are trying to avoid eating strawberries, and the winner of a multiplayer match is whoever ate the most strawberries. No, our goal is to get through all four rounds of a multiplayer match while keeping our strawberry counter at zero the whole way through. So anything that increases that number, whether it be strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, or cherries, is off limits for our consumption. Can it be done? Let's find out. So as previously stated, the multiplayer matches we're participating in are broken up into four rounds. They always start with a race, then move on to a minigame, before having a second race, and then they finish off with a battle royale. Let's start by examining how we fare in the minigames. There are four different types of minigames I encountered while attempting this challenge. Those minigames were collecting strawberries, breaking crumble blocks, defeating enemies, and having tea. Our goal in all of them is fundamentally the same. Try to stay out of the way of and avoid eating the strawberries in them until time is up. Among them, the tea minigame is definitely the easiest. That's because in its strawberries only appear in the teacups. That means we can literally do nothing and get through this minigame without being in any danger of eating. So yay for that. Crumble blocks is a bit more difficult. In this one, crumble blocks fall into the arena, which when broken are found to contain strawberries. The crumble blocks can appear basically anywhere, so you do need to be mobile to ensure you don't unwittingly break one, and even if you don't break one, you still do have to keep an eye out for stray strawberries from blocks which your opponents have broken. Overall though, it's not brain dead simple, but still is fairly easy to get out of with an empty stomach. The one where strawberries directly rain from above established itself as pretty tricky for the simple reason that there's no middle band between Kirby and the strawberries. Run into any of the many strawberries littering the ground and it's game over. Luckily, shadows appear where they're going to fall with enough advanced warning to allow you to react in time to avoid them. Still though, if you're not careful, you can find yourself getting cornered by strawberries, or even more annoyingly, you can be rolling around, minding your own business, doing everything right, only to get rammed into by one of your opponents straight into a strawberry. Usually it works out though. But the absolute worst of the minigames is the one where you defeat enemies. So much as touch an enemy here and congratulations, you've defeated it and gained its strawberries as a result. Now let me tell you, if he's not getting quartered was an issue on the minigame where strawberries are directly writing from above, you ain't seen nothing yet. Try having strawberries actively in pursuit of you. Cause that's basically what happens here. It's still not impossible to get through this without eating, but honestly, I'm not even sure I'd consider my odds as good as 50-50. And that's minigames. Taken as a whole, we can usually get through our minigame round without breaking our fast. Though, of course, with the exception of tea time, it's never guaranteed. Now let's take a look at the meat of the game. The races. There are eight different themed race courses, each with their own distinct flavor. But let's start by discussing the race mode in general. Now in theory, I could have made the races unthinkably easy for us to succeed in without eating. That is because once the first three players finish the race, the game waits only a few seconds before ending the race entirely and moving on, regardless of where the last player is. 
Well, that means in theory, one could just hang out in the starting area, completely safe from berries of all kinds, until everyone else completes the race, and by so doing, never even risk coming in contact with a strawberry. But that would be boring, wouldn't it? So I'm imposing a rule on myself that I have to finish the race without eating for it to count. And I'm defining finishing the race as getting to that last platter with the strawberry mountains on it. If I don't make it there in time or consume some berries along the way, that attempt is failed and I must try again from the beginning after, of course, playing through the rest of the current match because abandoners are totally lame, aren't they? Now, since we've committed to actually playing the races, let's talk about what difficulties we often find ourselves running into. Now, the obvious ones are the strawberries littered across the ground. Touching one of those is an immediate game over for our challenge. The solution is really as simple as just not touching them, but that sort of advice is up there in terms of usefulness with get good. As for more concrete steps one can take to bolster the chances of success, one thing you can do is try to never be in the lead. These race strawberries are first come, first served. And by first served, I mean only one served. That is to say, once one of your opponents eats a strawberry, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, bringing up the rear is not without risk. Firstly, your opponents are not going to eat every strawberry in your path. In fact, you may end up being quite surprised by how they manage to miss certain strawberries while ostensibly trying to get as many as possible. Truly, human incompetence knows no bounds. But even so, hopefully they'll wipe a good few off the board. The other danger to be aware of is the risk of falling too far behind. Remember, we need to get to the ending platter before the race ends. That means we can't afford to be more than a few seconds behind third place by the end of the race. The other little strategy we can employ, which admittedly can exacerbate the whole falling too far behind weakness from the first one if used too liberally, is not being afraid to go pretty extremely out of the way to avoid even being particularly close to the strawberries. Take the wide path, zig and zag widely to steer clear. Skip speed boosts, or just jump off the stage and hover for a bit if it comes to it. And where it really comes to it, is when crumble blocks are involved. Why the crumble block hate, you ask? They aren't even guaranteed to give you strawberries. Well, that is correct, they are not guaranteed to give you strawberries. It's actually a relatively small chance. Normally they give you a copy ability. Once you have a copy ability, then they're guaranteed to give you strawberries. And have I mentioned the fact that these things, unlike the strawberries themselves, actually do respawn, so being behind, unless you're right behind someone else, doesn't really help you all that much. And they are almost always bunched together in really annoying formations, as well as having perhaps the most generous hitbox in video gaming history. I mean, seriously, how is this considered a collision? Time and time again, these sweet little boxes spelled by doom, regardless of the course I was racing on. And you know what? Let's talk about these courses, because while all men may be created equal, these courses certainly are not. Let's start with donuts. This course obviously features donuts. Why else did you think it was called that? The smaller ones can often be basically skipped by hovering across the middle of them. Meanwhile, the bigger ones you generally find yourself having to take like a traffic circle, often while dodging cannons as well as moving strawberries and cinnamon sticks. Strawberry lace churros also come up quite a bit, which are either unbelievably easy if someone else has already traversed them, or fairly annoying if you've got a fresh one that still has strawberries on it. And then there's the tiny donut speed boost, which can be quite useful if you find yourself falling too far behind, but also have an annoying habit of obscuring strawberries, which they then often direct you straight into. Overall, I'd say donuts is tricky, kind of a mid-tier difficulty race course in my opinion. I'd rank pancakes as a bit easier. The crumble blocks are in positions here that are generally a bit easier to avoid than is the case on most courses. The syrup sections are extremely easy, and the rotating pancake walls don't concern me much. But the waffle-like halfpipe things are a bit tricky when full of strawberries, but usually if you get to one of those second, the strawberries have been pretty well cleared out. And I will say that I've been fed by the giant rotating pancake at the end more times than I'd like to admit. Hamburgers also aren't too bad. You do have the rotating burgers and ingredients to watch out for, but this course is generally speaking filled with wide, relatively safe areas between the strawberries. The one exception to this would be the fry pan handles and the bacon, but as long as you're not venturing across one of those obstacles first, they should be pretty well empty for you. Cake rolls is pretty annoying. It features very windy, narrow sections topped with strawberries. Now, normally these narrow sections can actually serve as a bit of a respite so long as there's someone in front of you to clear the strawberries. That's less so the case in cake rolls due to two main facts. 
Fact one is that being so windy and hazardous, it's more likely our opponents might end up missing strawberries on them than, say, would be the case on the churros, which then of course leaves more for us to dodge. The other fact to be aware of is that these often occur at forks in the road, meaning that even if we're at the back of the pack, we might not be looking at having had three opponents traverse the dangerous territory before us, but rather one or two. Though those forks in and of themselves actually can help mitigate the difficulty somewhat, as they generally give the option between a narrow, more difficult path and a wider, easier one. Even still though, cake rolls is never a dish I look forward to. Oh, and the crumble blocks are really annoyingly placed here, like particularly so. Ice cream is actually a course I enjoy quite a bit. Except for the whole ice cream thing, honestly. What I mean by that is that I like the layouts, but hate the physics. That's because ice cream employs ice physics when you are on top of, like, ice cream and other frozen treats. Look, rolling around in this game is hard enough when you actually have traction. Reducing the responsiveness of the controls is annoying at best, and detrimental and devastating at worst. But in spite of that, ice cream is actually, in my opinion, a top 50% course I like to see just due to its generously wide layout. I guess you just have to take the good with the bad here. Shortcake I'd slot just under cake rolls in terms of difficulty. Nothing's quite as devious as those tiny twisty pathways, but the ramps are annoying, the crumble blocks are too close together, and that final stretch is often a total nightmare to get through rapidly while also starving. So in short, this course does not make the short list of courses I like to see. Chocolate Fountain, on the other hand, is obviously the easiest of the race courses. This is for the simple reason that the chocolate is traversable without too great a penalty, especially if you jump over and all the strawberries are placed on things floating on the surface of the chocolate, not the chocolate itself. Cause what sick weirdo would combine chocolate and strawberries, am I right? That leaves just... Bomkuchen? For us to take a look at? And honestly, it's not too bad. You deal the spinning patel from hell, that is! And that obstacle basically single-handedly is enough to get this ranked as the most difficult race course. I have gotten through it before, but I still don't know how. So that's the race courses for you. And don't let this ranking mislead you. Even the easiest course is not a guarantee of success when it shows up, nor is the most difficult one literally impossible. This challenge, though, requires basically perfection, and putting aside the specific obstacles, sometimes that's just difficult to maintain through two competitive races and a minigame, when just one slip-up can always end it all. But we do have possible individual components, and therefore a possible whole. After hours of attempts, we get a menu of donuts, tea time, and pancakes. And you know what? We actually do manage to get through those three courses successfully without eating. And therefore, we find ourselves finally heading into a battle royale with an empty belly. But can we make it say that way? Because let me tell you, the battle royales, they're no joke either. There are a few rules of Kirby Buffet Battle Royale Club. Rule number one, do not kill anyone in the battle royale. This is because the reward for killing someone is theft of some of their strawberries on your behalf. This rule should be pretty easy to follow on account of our lack of mass with which to attack people with, on account of, well, you know, starving. Rule number two, do not, under any circumstance, die. This is because every time you die, there is a chance to be awarded strawberries as a consolation prize. Of course, if we were to be given that prize, that would in and of itself become a cause for consolation. Luckily, game theory suggests that no one has any reason to target a Kirby without strawberries for destruction. That doesn't mean we won't catch strays, though. Thanks. Rule number three. Use evasive maneuvers to avoid the fire of the evilly generous baskets. There are two major catch-up mechanics in the Battle Royales. The first is a pair of tongs which pursues first place and attempts to ensnare and kill the leader. This we don't really need to worry about. No, our arch nemesis in the Battle Royale is a basket which showers last place with strawberries. It's not a constant presence, but when it appears, the game gets serious. You must either run for your life or take a quick hover break when it's threatening you. Follow these rules and you have a chance at surviving the Battle Royale. But is it enough? Can we survive a minute in a strawberry lover's paradise? Well, I guess we're about to find out.
survived, but it's not over quite yet. There's still a chance we could win bonus strawberries. In particular, we could win the bonus strawberries for having hovered the longest, which would give us, I think, 40 strawberries, which is obviously 40 too many. So let's just see what uh, the bonuses end up being here. Most raspberries munched. Okay. Most minigame strawberries. All right. And most copy food abilities used. Yes! No bonuses, which means that it is possible to finish a round of Kirby's Dream Buffet without eating. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share, etc. And you'll likely want to subscribe and ring that bell if you haven't already, so you are notified of my next video, which, in case you're interested, will be a challenge on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. And lastly, if seeing Kirby starving has made you feel for the little guy, you may want to consider checking out my Let's Play channel, where I'm currently playing Kirby's Dream Buffet normally. But anyways guys, until next time, I have been Seabacraft, and I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.